In this PFO tutorial, we're going to look at the workflow for tracking a piece of footage right through from the initial import through to the uh, auto feature track. We'll uh, solve the camera and output that data, um, export the data to a 3D application. So, just to take a quick look at the user interface, um, we've got the main display window up here um, for viewing the footage. Underneath that, we have these nine icons, which are really the main features. Um, of PFO, and we'll be working through these from, from left to right as we uh, as we kind of go through this workflow. Underneath that, we have a, a timeline. Um, down here in the bottom left corner are some uh, camera parameters to set up uh, before we track, and then over here in the bottom right corner, we're able to um, save and load our project or shot as it's known in Ho. Um, and also, this help button just allows us to, if we click that, we can get information on uh, any icon or part of the user interface. Okay, so the first thing to do is to bring in the footage that we're going to track, which I can do using this icon down here. I'm going to bring in this quick time called French Quarter. And now that that's in the system, I can just play it through. So while playing it through, we can make some observations on the, uh, the camera setup. You can see there's a handheld shot. Down here, I'm going to set this to free motion as opposed to, uh, to a node or pan. And then we can also see that the focal length of the lens has remained constant throughout the shot, so we can leave this focal length button on constant as opposed to a variable focal length. And I'm really just working through these icons from left to right. I'm going to start with this one, which is uh, the lens distortion icon. Um, so we're going to use this to remove any distortion that's been introduced by the lens. And the way I'm going to do that is just find a frame which has some things that I know uh, should be straight. So I'm going to pick this line down here because I know that this, this street marking um, ought to be straight, but it is showing a little bit of curvature. So if I just click on that, then you'll see that um, I has gone ahead and straightened that up and introduced a kind of uh, a barrel distortion onto the shot. Now next to this icon is the image matte icon. And what this does, it allows us to, to specify a high contrast black and white mask which will tell Ho not to place tracking points in certain parts of the shot. So for example if there's motion inside the footage which would uh, confuse the camera solver and give us a lower quality result, we can mask out that motion in advance and then Ho will ignore this part of the footage. So in this shot, if uh, I just play through, we can see there's a guy walking from, from right to left here um, and probably if he's left unmasked, Ho will attempt to put some, some tracking features on him. So what I've done is I've actually created a, a very rough mask just around him as he walks. So I can now bring that in. Here we go, uh, mask.mov. And you'll see that now there's a, a little pink blob around him indicating that, that he's been masked out. So now that we've undistorted the shot and, and applied a mask to the footage, we can go ahead and track features in the footage by clicking on the track features icon and the next icon along. And this will automatically select features which Ho thinks will provide good uh, 2D tracking information that can be used to solve the camera. So if I go ahead and click on that, we can see the tracks actually taking place. That's going to take maybe a minute or two to track through, so I'm going to pause the video and come back after that's done. So now that track's completed, um, we can see all the features that have been tracked are indicated by crosses. And if I hover over one of those crosses, you can see the arc that that feature's taken throughout the lifetime of that particular track. We can go ahead and select individual features or by holding down the left mouse button we can lasso around several features and just by hitting the delete key these can be removed. So if we have a feature which we can see has been particularly poorly tracked we can just take it out. As another way of visualizing this data if I come down here and pull up this tab I can reveal a graph which is um, basically showing us the, the proportion of well-tracked features in each frame of the shot. If I do lasso around every single feature inside of this frame and delete them, you'll see now I've made a hole in the graph indicating that we don't have any well-tracked features or any features at all in that part of the shot. So I'm just going to undo that with Apple Z. So before we go ahead to solve the camera in this case, um, it's always a good idea to go through and, and eliminate poorly tracked features which are going to um, potentially give us a, a, a lower quality result. And for example, if we look at these, these fences over here, like the one in front of the police car, you see obviously it's got these, these vertical lines. 
anywhere that those vertical lines intersect with the sort of horizontal lines on the uh, on the car behind, well, the hose is going to pick up those those areas of intersection as as points which it can track. But because we have parallax between the fence and the police car, those points are going to kind of shift as the camera is moving, and that's going to give us some bad tracking data. Even if the paths are green, they're still not going to be um, points that we really want to be tracking. So right now I'm just going to go through and kind of clean up the tracking points on those fences and anywhere else that I see points which are, which are drifting, just to kind of hopefully improve the integrity of the solution that we get. So I'm going to pause the video again and while I do that. So having now done some cleanup work on these uh, 2D feature tracks, we can see looking at the graph that we've still got um, enough tracking information to actually go ahead and solve the shot. So it's time again working from left to right um, to select the next icon which is the, uh, the focal length estimation tool and, uh, and scene orientation tool. Um, if I click on that I get this cube overlay and basically what I'm being invited to do is to, uh, is to pin the vertices of this cube to an area of kind of uh, cubic geometry within the shot, so something like the corner of a building or in this case the, uh, the, the base of this sculpture. So I'm just going to grab these vertices here and uh, pin them into position. And you'll see as I'm doing that, that I'm, I've got a ground plane here which is being uh, oriented. But also, Ho is estimating the focal length of the lens which it will then use for the, uh, the camera solution. Okay, so I've pinned this into place. And now I can go ahead and select the next icon here, which is the, the camera solver. And again, this will take uh, maybe a couple of minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and come back after that's done. So now that that's completed, we have a solution for the motion of the camera in 3D space. And uh, you'll see that I'm no longer looking at a 2D tracking points. But instead, these have been uh, converted to, to a point cloud where those features exist in, in 3D space. And now this graph down here has also changed so that instead of showing us the, uh, the error in the 2D tracking data, it's now actually showing us a measure of how much error there is between the original 2D tracked uh, points and the projected position of those features in 3D space. So again, if we move over one icon to the right, I've got this uh, scene orientation icon here. And if I click that, you'll see that we've got these axes have appeared which allows me to translate my ground plane around. If I hold down the space bar, then I get a further set of options for orienting the scene. I can reset the ground plane back to its default position. I can scale it, um, rotate it around. And what's really useful is I can come in here and click on a feature, something that I know is on the ground of the shot, and I can move the origin of the ground plane to that feature. Therefore, hopefully, all of these points in the shot which are on the ground should now be also intersecting with that ground plane, assuming our earlier scene orientation was good. Also, now that we've solved the camera, we can uh, come down here to the bottom left and click on this icon that says 2D, and we'll get a 3D view. And by holding down the Shift button, I can translate that view around. By just using the uh, left mouse button, I can rotate. And if I hold down Option, then I can zoom in and out. And you can see you can see the whole of that point cloud. You can also see this white line here indicating the uh, path that the camera is taking in space. And this is also a pretty good view for uh, just making sure that your scene orientation makes sense um, relative to the point cloud and the camera. So now there's just a couple of icons left. Um, if I move on to the one second from the end, this allows me to export my undistorted footage from the lens distortion that we did earlier. And I can export that as a quick time. And then finally I can select this icon on the right which allows me to export the camera data to a third-party 3D application. I'm just going to select 3ds Max script at the top. And I've done some test exports in some different formats that you can download along with this tutorial.